Hey, I just did over 300 push-ups and I need something to eat. Maybe like some protein or see what we got here. We got a little bit of protein. What's under here? Ah, perfect. Camel's blood. Hey, where's the stinking can opener? I don't know. Nah, I don't need no stinking can opener anyway. Yeah! Yeah! Camel's blood. Yeah! I don't know if you heard, but I did over a thousand push-ups, that is. All right, not really. But I did do over 300, and there are people that can attest that I did 307, I think, push-ups. And uh, it took me three and a half hours to do. And your boy's chest is tight, and my triceps, I know that they're going to be stinking screaming tomorrow. But it was a good time. We had a good time, man. So I appreciate you guys thinking, hanging out with me during the North Carolina Campbell game where the Heels end up finally routing the Fighting Camels from Bowie's Creek. So let's get into the box score, if you will. North Carolina and Campbell, at the end of the first quarter, it was 7-7. Seven to seven. And we're sitting here scratching our heads thinking, what in the world, bro? Like, why did these guys continue to come out slow and uh, just, it, it was almost like a lifeless, if you will. Just, there was no passion, it didn't seem like. And, you know, in a game where you're playing against a lesser opponent, especially in the, the first part of that game, I felt like, North Carolina was not dominating the line of scrimmage like they should. You know, there just there still wasn't much push, man. And it was super, super frustrating. But the North Carolina Tar Heels did end up taking a 28-7 lead into halftime where Tez Walker scored on two long touchdown receptions. And um, O'Marion Hampton also had two touchdown runs in the first half. And O'Marion, once again, just proved to be an absolute freaking monster, man. He just runs the ball so hard. And, um, you know, this was a game where if he would have got 25, 30 touches, I mean, he might have rushed for 250, 300 yards because he was bound to break another one. He did have a 75-yarder that was called back on some ridiculous holding call. I mean, the flags were just – there were some really bad calls both ways in this football game. And, um, you know, fortunately, North Carolina was able to overcome just how much laundry was put on the field. But – they take a 28-7 lead into half, and then they kind of opened it up in the second, and they played a lot better football, I might add. And, you know, the starters only played until basically the end of the third quarter. So, end of the third quarter, I think it's 45-7. to Hills tack on a, a, a field goal, or excuse me, yeah, a, a field goal, 45-7. to And then the second team guys actually outscore Campbell 14 to nothing. So that was real promising to see. Um, we finally got to see Connor Harrell get a little bit of burn. He had a really long touchdown run. He had a really great pass to uh, Culliver on the right side. That I mean, he just placed that ball perfectly. So that was really encouraging to see, seeing Connor Harrell make a couple of plays, man. Um, you know, obviously it's against Campbell, but we have not been able to see him play against anyone. You know, because Carolina just hasn't been really in too many games where they could get him burned, where he could actually throw the ball around. But Connor looked good, man. So I was real pleased with how Connor Harrell played. Drake may go 16 for 23, 244 yards and four touchdowns. Had a really good game manager game. That's all he really needed to do in the sense that what Carolina really wanted to instill was that run game. Like I said, O'Marion Hampton had 15 carries for 144 yards, two touchdowns. Absolute hammer. And then Bryson Nesbitt led all receivers with six receptions for 78 yards. For the Campbell fighting Campbells, Hodge Williams, man, he didn't play bad. You know, he really didn't. He goes 25 for 37, 185. 
a touchdown. He did throw an interception. And then uh, their running back, Williams, goes 11 carries for 51 yards. And they had a receiver um, have nine receptions for 102 yards. And, you know, in the first half, uh, probably about midway through the second, Campbell was actually leading not only the time of possession, they were leading by total yards from the line of scrimmage, man. So it was just kind of like Carolina was just, they were off the field. You know, Campbell was keeping them off of the field, and the offense just, um, there was a couple of drives where they just looked kind of lethargic, man, to be honest with you. And they kind of turned it up at the end of the second quarter to take a good lead into the half. So Campbell finishes with 287 yards of total offense. They did have four turnovers, including three lost fumbles and an interception. So Carolina having no turnovers, they're plus four in the turnover margin. So that was good to see. That obviously helped them with that 59-7 to victory. But the interesting thing is, is that Campbell had 20 first downs, way too freaking much, man. And once again, we just did not do a very good job throughout the game in establishing the line of scrimmage. And, 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 you know, for these next three teams, man, you know, Clemson just beat Notre Dame. Duke is going to be a physical team. They're going to have to run the football if Riley Leonard is not playing. And, uh, you know, NC State is obviously going to be physical. So we are really going to be tested in that box, man, in the front seven. And they are going to have to shore some things up, man, if we're going to be competitive because these are teams that are going to want to run the football. And if they're having success, they will gash us. And, you know, I really hope that Gene kind of makes some changes and uh, because we have, we have to stop the run, man. But Campbell led time of possession 38 minutes and 26 seconds to 21 minutes and 34 seconds. It's just, it's amazing. It really is amazing how, how well they did with keeping the ball out of Carolina's offensive hand, even though we won 59 to seven, you know, they literally held on to the football. It's because they kept converting first downs. So that was, it was kind of painful to watch, man. But out of the 287, they had 185 yards passing. Um, they had 102 yards rushing on the ground. So, you know, I really don't think that the box score is indicative of what Campbell was able to do, and they shouldn't have been able to do. Um, North Carolina finishes with 318 yards passing and uh, 276 yards rushing on the ground, 594 yards of total offense, exactly what you would expect them to do against that inferior competition. So once again, you know, the offense eventually, if you take the whole football game, the offense came to play. And they played real well. Drake had a good game, four touchdowns, no turnovers. Marion had a good game. You know, he has two touchdown rushes in the first half. Um, you know, Tez Walker, who I didn't even know was going to play. Tez had two catch, uh, touchdown catches in the first half. So we did really well on the offensive side of the football. And I'm very pleased with how they responded. I don't understand how we keep coming out slow. Um, especially against the inferior competition. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the Virginia game. Uh, Georgia Tech, we came out fast, and we just couldn't hold on. But um, I was kind of disappointed in how the game started. But they were able to turn it up, and I would say that 59-7 to uh, is a good victory. I can't remember, what did I pick? 52-13 or 56-13, to so kind of right there. So I guess that they technically did better than I thought that they would do. But it just didn't feel like that in the first half. But the boys are back in the winner's circle, man, and that is extremely important to get those two ugly losses out, that, that taste out of our mouth, man. So I'm really glad to be back in the win column. It's a good victory. You held them to seven points. I would say that's successful, even though it wasn't always pretty. And uh, you score 59 against that competition. That's really, really good. I and before I get out of here, man, I just want to give a quick shout out, man, to a couple of guys that, you know, they're just, they're, they're showing their loyalty. They come out here and hang out with me every stinking live chat. I just cannot thank you guys enough. Carlton, Chad Hicks, 
um, King Peebles, you guys are always in there, man. And I know that there are many more. I know that there are more, man. But, you know, those are just the names that are ringing the top of my stinking head right now. Um, I think Carlton became a member today, which I just cannot thank you enough, Carlton. Uh, first member of the Huddle Hooligans. So I'm extremely appreciative of that. And uh, it was a good game, man. We had fun. They sat there and watched me you know, do over 300 push-ups because before it's Campbell. I'm like, hey, we'll make this exciting. Every time Carolina scores a point, I'll do a push-up. And uh, I think I got to 42. And then once I got the 49, if I'm not mistaken, after at 49, no, 45, 52, and 59, man, I had to break that crap up, dude, because your boy is just not in the same shape that I was even a year ago. So I got to get back at it, man. But we had a real good time, man. It was a good victory. Good to be back in uh, victory lane. And like I was telling those guys, man, make sure that you guys stay tuned. If you can, get to the Duke game, bro, because I'm going to be there on Saturday. We'll have some more details about that. We'll be handing out some wristbands. Uh, first five people that come and hang out with me, they can fit a shirt. I got a couple of larges and some XLs. So they're not, you know, if you're a bigger person, hey, man, I got you later once we get the store up and everything. But um, first couple of people, man, you'll get a free T-shirt. And, and obviously, we're going to be handing out a couple of cool wristbands uh, that say they're Carolina blue with white lettering. It says the Tar Heel Huddle. So I cannot thank you guys enough for all of your support. And, I mean, 59 to 7, bro. You really can't ask for much more than that. So... If you haven't already, make sure that you like, share, subscribe to the content. If you haven't already, man, if you like what you're seeing, make sure you think about maybe becoming a member, man. It's only $4.99 a month. It's going to help support me and just help me get better equipment so that I can just streamline this whole process and, um, you know, hopefully get everything more aesthetically pleasing, better computer, better. And, it, you know, it's because we're going to be here, man. Here, here to stay not going anywhere, trying to build up Tar Heel Nation, get a place where we can all gather together and, you know, we can sit here and talk about Carolina football and basketball. So, good victory, man. 7-2, and 5-1 and one at home. We got these last three games, man. It's exciting because we are not mathematically eliminated from the ACC championship game. Not yet, but we got to handle business. And we'll find out come next Saturday, man. So, anyway, love you guys. And we'll catch you on the next one, Tar Heel Nation.